questions. You have uh, tweeted in the past about supporting defund the, pol the police, which is uh, something that uh, I think perhaps some people in the Black Lives Matter movement support, but also this tweet from back in 2015. The KKK, the police, and government officials are one in the same. I wonder, do you stand by that comment? Absolutely, and thank you for having me. Um, I want us to understand the history of policing in this country. And so Twitter doesn't allow you to give a whole history of policing in this country, but in a few sentences, we can just confirm that there is no historian that I've ever come in uh, contact with who disputes the fact that policing in this country hails from slave catching. And so when we say that policing is, you know, the new millennial slave catching. We're not saying that we don't want public safety. We're saying we want real public safety where community is really centered, where black safety is centered. And we know that when black people are safe, we also create safety for everyone else. Uh, Dr. West, Absolutely. you talked about your campaign being about abolishing police brutality, poverty, and homelessness. Can you be specific? What are the policies behind those pretty big, lofty ideas? Well, one is that, you see, abolition is the fundamental theme of the black freedom movement that embraces poor and working people across the board. Abolition of slavery, sure. abolition of Jim Crow. I want abolition of poverty. I want the abolition of homelessness. I want the abolition of workers not gaining access to wages so that the, the larger is, context how? of policing has to do with we got to make sure we don't have poor people in despair. We got to make sure the young children have quality education health care and living wage and safe community. So it goes hand in hand in that regard. But it's the the ugly police brutality. And we just saw in Mississippi with Brother Jenkins and Brother Parker. Thank God for Malik Shabash and Brother Trent down there, the lawyers. What happened down there? All right, guys. So we got to talk about the radical left and the fact that there is another attack on policing in this country before the election. OK, and nobody should be surprised because the George Floyd incident that happened before the 2020 election was a key catalyst to the leftist uprising that happened before the election that I believe led a lot of people to go out and to vote because they felt like policing or police reform was actually a real issue in this country that needed to be addressed. And it really, in my opinion, in the grand scheme of all of the issues that we have in this country, if you talk about inflation, if you talk about immigration, if you talk about crime, okay, if you talk about our debt, if you talk about uh, all of the real problems that this country really has, uh, I think policing is probably at the bottom of the list when it comes to priorities, things that we should be focused on. However, uh, the response to the George Floyd situation uh, ushered in an era of police reform, radical police reform that has led to chaos and destruction in these liberal cities. OK, like New York, like Chicago, like D.C., like Seattle, like San Francisco, like Portland. I can go down the list. OK, um, all of these cities have elected soft on crime D.A.s. OK, they have soft on crime po prosecutors. They have demonized police to the point where they don't want to become police officers anymore. They don't want to work. They don't want to do their jobs. So therefore, they're struggling to recruit police officers to stop the crime. So you have a lot of crimes that are not being reported. And then the media and the Democrats gaslight you and want you to believe that. No, no, no. Crime is down. Right. You're a conspiracy theorist. Uh, crime is not up. Crime is 100 percent under control when people's lived experience is actually telling you the exact opposite that, hey, crime actually is out of control and it is worse than it's been in a long, long, long time in this country. And part of the reason why is because of the far left's demonization of police. And I'm just telling you guys that that is something that is going to escalate going into the election. OK, and you're going to see more radical proposals that are going to be put out there in order to try to further destroy the institution of law enforcement in this country because that's ultimately what what the far left wants right they want chaos and destruction that is fundamental to trying to bring in uh the communism that they really want okay that's what the goal is so the good thing is, is that there's some people on the left who are seeing this right they're seeing the chaos and destruction that is being caused by this anti-police sentiment that is happening in this country that is not grounded in any type of common sense or logic or reality or any type of real sense of priority 
in regards to the real issues in this country. And there are consequences to that, right? And one of the people that are speaking out about the consequences of that on the left is Anna Kasparian of TYT, who has undergone a very fascinating political transformation. And one of the things that she is realizing is that the race hustlers are a, a part of the problem, right? The fact that they're analyzing every situation using race instead of using their common sense, instead of understanding the law, instead of understanding logic, um, they're analyzing every situation uh, through the lenses of race, including law enforcement. And one of the reasons why they're trying to essentially abolish police, right? That's what they want to do. They want to get rid of law enforcement is because law enforcement is racist. Okay. They are racist. And, um, you know, because of that, we must get rid of them. They're bad. We must stop cops from being able to do their jobs, do basic things like, for example, issue traffic stops. And again, we all know that this type of stuff leads to chaos and destruction and people lose their lives. Innocent people lose their lives. And Anna Kasparian, again, spoke about this in context of the Calvin Riley case where you have people trying to defend drunk drivers, right? Trying to basically defend this guy clearly and obviously driving drunk uh, by trying to smear the police officers as a racist or not credible, which is just, again, completely and totally ridiculous. But uh, they're essentially trying to say that, well, you know, people should be able to just drive drunk and, you know, we shouldn't have traffic stops and we just shouldn't have law and order because, you know, police bad, police evil. And again, people like Anna Kasparian, uh, can clearly and obviously see the writing on the wall and how this is a bad idea. And this leads to bad outcomes for the country overall. And a DUI course, perform 50 hours of community service, participate in random breathalyzer tests, and his driver's license will be suspended for six months, which I think is a perfectly fine punishment considering how serious it is when someone decides to get behind the wheel when they are drunk. Because at that point, it's not just about their behavior possibly impacting them and their life because they could very easily crash, cause an accident. But obviously it's an incredibly selfish decision because there are other people on the road. And I personally have lost someone that I've known to a drunk driver. So drunk driving is a serious thing. And to provide cover for anyone who's drunk driving or to minimize the severity of that issue in order to engage in what I've been seeing online about this man and about this case, I think is just unacceptable, right? I feel like the drunk driving really took a back seat and the seriousness of drunk driving took a back seat in this story because the focus was on the race of the police officer who pulled him over because she was a white woman and the race of Riley, a black man. And I think that when you see everything through the lens of race, sometimes it can blind you to what the facts are. And what the facts are in this case is that a man made a decision to get drunk, get behind the wheel of a vehicle and drive erratically in early morning hours. And I did not see a moment in that body cam footage and I watched it from beginning to end showing the officers disrespect him or in any way violate his rights. But that is not the narrative that you're gonna hear from one half of the political spectrum that is just absolutely convinced that they planted evidence in this man's vehicle. I know that people get real fired up about these stories and they wanna jump on it immediately. Try to avoid doing that. Wait until you have access to the full body cam footage and don't rely on highly edited videos that other people put out there as they narrate to you what they believe happened. And one final thing I'll say about this. This is one of the viral cases that's now being used to make an argument that police officers should no longer be allowed to do traffic stops. I think that would be a disastrous policy. I think that would be a terrible idea in Los Angeles where the city council is in fact unfortunately considering this. We're currently dealing with things like street takeovers. We're dealing with hit and run incidents where pedestrians are getting hit by cars, by drivers who then flee the scene. The idea that we don't need police officers to do traffic stops is absolutely ridiculous. And in place of police officers, they want these unarmed ambassadors to do the traffic stops. Completely ignoring the fact that we live in a country that is 
swimming with guns. We've got a ton of guns. We have a ton of people who have guns in their vehicles. The idea that we're going to have like unarmed, you know, community ambassadors do traffic stops to me is a ridiculous idea. If we have issues with policing, if we want to provide better training and reforms, we should focus on that. But the idea of doing away with policing overall is just not something that I can get behind. And I certainly will not get behind the idea of using a case like this that was misreported wildly as an excuse for pursuing those types of policies. Yeah, so again, what you have here is a little bit of common sense on the left, right? It ain't too much, okay? You really don't see it too often, but when you do see it, I think it is appropriate to acknowledge that, hey, you know, this actually makes sense, okay? Because that is what's going to happen moving forward. Uh, again, going into the elections, that what the left is going to do is that they're going to use these instances involving police that are going to be controversial, just like they did in 2020, and they're going to use that to rally the base, okay? And they're going to get these people to try to vote based off of this idea that, well, policing is this big issue that we need these huge reforms and we need to basically abolish police in some cases, right? Stop traffic stops, um, which is something I think they tried to do in Memphis or something like that. Do all do a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't actually make people safer, right? It's actually going to cause people to lose their lives, right? You have idiots out here, again, defending drunk drivers, okay? Thinking that for whatever reason, <laughs> driving drunk is not dangerous, okay? Or that driving drunk is not illegal. Uh, that's the type of things that are being said, right? Because a lot of people really do want to see this country burn, right? They want to see chaos and destruction. And the easiest way to usher that in is through demonization of police, of trying to undermine the laws in this country that are designed to keep order, right? Now, again, what you're seeing is some of these cities, like, for example, San Francisco, um, instead of actually addressing the crime crisis, they're using the crime crisis in order to basically uh, implement more communism, right? In the sense that they are forcing grocery stores or attempting to force grocery stores to stay in business, to continue to take a loss, to operate at a loss, even if they're being robbed out of business simply because they don't feel like grocery stores should have the right to leave certain communities, right? Even if the crime is out of control, okay? Even if the crime is out of control, the business say, hey, we want to leave because of crime. San Francisco is basically trying to say, no, you can't do that, <laughs> right? You can't do that. You have to stay and get robbed, right? This is what they're doing. So you're seeing a lot of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs policies that are going to be proposed that are being implemented. And despite the fact that, again, a lot of these policies don't really make any sense. And the people in these areas are actually fed up with these soft on crime policies. Okay, they're revolting, like, for example, in Oakland. Um... Again, they're going to try to use these uh, instances of police brutality, right? These very racially charged, very sensationalized instances of police brutality that are all of a sudden now going to end up coming back to the mainstream, right? It's going to be something that we're going to start to talk about a lot more in this country, right? Right before the election. They're going to use that as a way to motivate people to come out and to vote for these individuals who are going to claim that, well... Through becoming more progressive, more progressive criminal justice reform, we are going to implement policies that are going to stop this, right? And the only thing that that's going to do is make it harder for police to do their jobs in this country, and it's going to lead to more chaos and destruction, okay? And again, it is it is a breath of fresh air to see somebody like Anna Kasparian uh, realizing what is happening and how the left weaponizes race in order to try to push policies that are destructive for the country. And I think the defund the police movement, the demonization of police in this country, I think is one of the prime examples of what we see when uh, politicians and the left and the media uses race as a catalyst to usher in their agenda to essentially dismantle policing in this country. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black and sort of perspective. Peace.